Yamaha YPOW actually works. That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delisalo with Audioholics. It is not April 1st. I'm here to tell you that Yamaha's latest version of YPOW actually works. And as you guys know, I've always been, you know, skeptical and critical of room correction systems because I think in most cases, if not done properly, they could do more harm than good. And at the very maximum, what I usually like to do is correct the base below 300 hertz and either use a shelving filter for high frequencies or just don't, don't do any EQ at all if you have really good speakers and good room acoustics. Well, I wanted to check out the latest version of YPOW. Historically, when I've tested YPOW, it did things, but it didn't do much for bass frequencies. In fact, up until the last generation or two, they didn't even correct bass frequencies. They stopped at 63 hertz, and I just kept nailing them in the review saying, we need full PEQ all the way down to 20 hertz or below. So I think when I tested the Yamaha 5200 processor, I was able to use the manual PEQ down to 15 hertz, which is incredible because then you could go and manually get rid of big bass bumps, basically using a very simple uh filter here like this it's a if you find a bump in your base you find the center frequency then you find the bandwidth of that and you just divide the two and that's the q of your filter and it really helps you to flatten the base out in your room assuming that you find the similar base bump for every seat if you're using multiple subs that eq is effective for all the seats not just one seat so I wanted to see what YPOW was doing in the latest RXA6A. As you guys know, I did a bench test of this receiver. I did some other videos about how to set it up using the web interface. So I've covered this receiver a little bit. And I brought this into the guest room of the AudioHulk Smart House. And I tested it with a Paradigm SVS speaker system. As you can see in this picture here, I've got the Paradigm um, Premier 800Fs the 500C center channel, and I've got the SVS, uh, the, the Micro 3000 subwoofer. So I want to share my screen now, and I want to go over um, the measurements I made in this room using YPOW. I did it multiple times. It's not like I did it just one time and I got good results. I ran YPOW three or four times. So I'm going to share my screen now and show you guys the results. And entire screen, and here we go. All right, so I've got my first um, REW measurement suite here, and I want to show you uh, exactly what each measurement does. So in this case, this is what the Paradigm uh, 800F speakers looks like, measuring it at the listening position. And the listening position in the guest room is about a foot or two off the wall. So there's a lot of buildup of standing waves. As you can see, there's some pretty big bass bumps in the 40 hertz range or so. And all of this stuff is EQable. So it looks bad, but it's really not that bad. It actually, this room actually sounds pretty good. The bass tilt in this room is really good. It gives you a good supple bass, ample bass, even from small speakers, but it does need some help. So the first thing I did was I ran... Yamaha has a new feature called the low frequency correction and it basically identifies the room modes and it just knocks them down a dB or so and to turn to show you the frequencies of where the problems are and as you can see when I turn on uh, the YPAL low frequency correction it does a little bit more than they said they said it only shows a 1 dB correction and I'll show you the on-screen display shortly but it, it even though it shows that pictorially it's doing more than it's saying. It's actually extending the bandwidth a little bit of the speakers. I was uh, surprised to see that, but I've measured it several times. And like, you could see that below about 25 hertz, there's some extension gained there. Uh, most importantly, though, look what it did to those base peaks. It actually brought them down. And that's the step in the right direction. So I wanted to compare that with the flat setting. And the flat setting is usually what I recommend um, if you're going to do full range correction as opposed to some of the other settings that I have. It just usually sounds better to me because it doesn't lob off the high frequencies. So here you can see the flat setting. And I'm going to just show you the manual versus flat so you can see without having so much confusion. The blue is flat and the low frequency is green. 
So flat was more aggressive, obviously. It took away a lot of base energy. Um, but the cool thing about that is if you take the low frequency settings and import it into the manual setting, you could do some cool things with it. And I'm going to show you my manual results. These are my manual results. This is me kind of adjusting the filters on my own as opposed to the low frequency mode, as you can see here. And I want to show you compared to the original. So you see, I took a lot of bass energy out and I even extended the base of the speakers a little bit. And I was a bit aggressive here because I knew I was adding a subwoofer and the subwoofer is not in these measurements. But the bottom line is YPOW actually did stuff for bass. And this is the first time I've actually seen Yamaha do full bass bandwidth correction. And that's not even just the subwoofer channel. This is just the main channel. So that's really uh, promising right there. So the next thing I want to show you is the paradigm with the subwoofer. As you can see, there's a huge bump here at around 46 hertz. And I'm going to show you in a minute the on-screen display of the um, web editor. Yamaha's YPOW actually identified this base mode in the manual settings or in the low frequency settings. And then I went in and I fixed this problem because Yamaha helped me identify it. Now, I would have found this myself just because I'm experienced, but for someone that doesn't really know too much about making measurements. Um, this Yamaha YPOW is actually very useful. And the other thing I wanted to mention is the integration that it got between the subwoofer and the main channels was really spot on. Like it set the distance of the subwoofer, I think 17 feet away, even though the sub was only about 14 feet away, it compensated for the added group delay uh, caused by the DSP processing in the SVS sub. So I changed the settings on the subwoofer. I changed uh, on the uh, subwoofer setting. I changed the distances on it. And when I went up a few feet or down a few feet, the integration got worse. So Yamaha was actually identifying the correct distances for my speakers as well as the subwoofer. And it's not always the physical distance. Sometimes you have to account for the added group delay that you get from the DSP processing in most modern subwoofers. So this is basically no EQ at all. This is just the main channel set large with the subwoofer connected to it. And you can see this good integration. There's just way too much base energy over in the 46 hertz range. So here's the graph that I show you. I just added the manual setting. This is me taking that the same low frequency correction settings, importing it into the manual, tweaking it myself, playing around with the gains. I added a little extra gain at 20 hertz, as you could see in the yellow line, there's more base extension there. This problem here, I got rid of this null just by doing some of the little EQ tricks in here. So very happy with these results. That's a pretty good base response right there. And let me see what else I got here. So I've got, that was the first round uh, the first mic position I measured, I measured another mic position. So this is left plus right, no EQ, left plus right, manual EQ. Again, I've improved the bass response using the imported low frequency settings and just tweaking it on my own. And you can see the response is much better now. And that's just the main channels. That's a really good response. That's a really good in-room response with no acoustic treatments in the room at all. So that's very promising right there. And then here we got the left plus right, no EQ. And look at that huge bass bump in the 46 Hertz range. Here it is again now when I use the low frequency correction, I gained a little bit more bass below 30 Hertz. I got a little uh, suck out here that's exacerbated. So that's not so great. But when I go and do the manual and just change some of those filter settings, I got that much better. So when you look at the manual versus what it was before, the bass is much more linear, it's more extended, and it's just better sounding subjectively when I did listening to it. So I wanna show you another round of measurements that I did as well. And we've got my final round of measurements here. This is when I did a separate calibration. So like I said, I've done about three or four calibrations. I varied my mic positions. I just wanted to make sure I consistently got good results. So just the paradigm left speaker alone, that's with no EQ. And then this is left flat. Again, it extended the bass response and it helped get rid of some of those bumps. Not perfect, but it actually was doing stuff. 
And I'll talk a little bit about what I thought flat setting sounded like versus the different EQ settings. But right now I just want to show you the measurements. And then the right with no EQ versus right flat. Again, it, it added a little bit bump here at 140 hertz and, and 500 hertz. And I actually heard a little bit of this coloration um, when I was doing my listening test. But the bottom line is it's, it's doing stuff. So impressive right there. Here's left plus right flat as opposed to left plus right no EQ. Again, much more linear response. And then left plus right low frequency. And then my manual settings, of course, always trump. Um, they're always better. I mean, as good as auto EQ tends to be, I, I can go in and, and usually adjust and make things better. And you can see that here. And what do you see here? Left plus right and sub. Yeah, I already showed you this one. Sub flat. So I think there was one more I wanted to show you is the extra bass feature. So here we have left plus right small. I set my speaker small with the sub on, no EQ. And then I know people were asking about, well, what happens if you use extra bass with your speaker set small? And, and in my last video, I, I said, I don't recommend doing that. But then Yamaha said it could give the presence of the small speakers. It could fill in bass to make them sound bigger. And you could see that here, it actually did fill in the bass in the 70 Hertz range and in the 130 Hertz range, but at the expense of it misaligned the, uh, the, the coupling between the main speakers and the subs below 30 Hertz. So you lost a significant amount of bass there. Uh, this is without EQ. This is just basically turning that extra bass on with the speaker set small. I don't recommend using extra bass with the speaker set small. The only time I, I tell you to turn extra bass on is if you want that subwoofer to have output when your main speakers are set large and you're listening to two channel music. And that's what I did in the other measurements with the subwoofers plus the mains. So overall, I'm very happy with, with those results. And what I wanna do now is log into the web setup at 195, I think is my IP address. It is. So as you guys know, if you type in the IP address slash setup, you can get into the web setup features here, which is awesome. And then you click on speaker. And like I said before, it nailed, YPOW nailed the uh, distances really well. I was really surprised by that, especially the subwoofer distance. Historically, I'd never had a successful uh, YPOW subwoofer distance. And in this case, it nailed the subwoofer distance every time I ran it, and it got me good integration with my main speakers, which is very important. The channel trims were also, um, I found the subwoofer level was about 2 dB too hot, and you guys know I'm a bass head. So it initially set it for minus 3.5. So I, I lowered it down to five, minus 5.5. And that's where the, subjectively the bass sounded right to me. Of course, that's all subjective to you as well. So whatever you guys like. But here you can see the uh, different filter settings. And you can see this graphically on their GUI if you have a TV plugged into your AVR. And you can see the 46 hertz here. That was the problematic uh, range that I was showing you in the graphs. I'm in the manual setting. When I go to the low frequency setting, it actually gives you a pictorial graph here um, because you can't change this. This is basically what it's identifying. And it's showing you all the different problem frequencies it found for your speakers. But look what it found for the subwoofer channel. And I just did this as a 2.1 setup. Um, you can see right here the 46.8 hertz Q of five. That's exactly what I found uh, with my calculations as well. So that was really awesome that it did that. And yeah. So subjectively, when I was listening to YPOW, the first thing I did was I, I set the system up. I just wanted to listen to two channel. Let me tell you, the amp section in the, in the RX-A6A sounds really meaty. I mean, it sounds powerful. You saw my bench test. It measures really well. It drives four ohms really excellent for an AVR. I just felt like the paradigms on their own, just with no EQ and no sub, were, had some of the best sound I heard out of those speakers. And I was using the Denon uh, A110 integrated amp before that, which is an incredibly good two-channel integrated amp. I felt like the Yamaha was like, you know, 
neck and neck with that kind of sound quality. It was that good. Um, when I turned on YPOW, uh, the flat setting, the bass was very full and integrated, but I felt like the sound was a bit compressed, especially in the mid areas. Uh, the high frequencies were fine. And that's the, that's the interesting thing. If you look at the YPOW results, um, it didn't even do any high frequency correction. You know, it stopped its filters at a couple of hundred hertz or kilohertz or something like that, which is, I really like that. Um, I know Yamaha doesn't even do any correction above 16K. And they recognize the fact that the microphone position is so critical at those frequencies that you're, and you're trying to do any type of high Q correction at high frequencies like that. It's, it's a crapshoot. So the fact that they were only limiting their correction to a couple of hundred hertz in this case, maybe a thousand hertz or 2000 hertz, I think that's fine. Subjectively, I just, when I listened to two channel music with the flat setting, I felt like things sounded a little more compressed. They weren't as free and open as I heard with the EQ off. But when I took those manual filters or the flat filter, I'm sorry, low frequency filters and put it in the manual setting and did my own tweaks, when I went from my manual setting to off, it was night and day. I mean, the bass was so much more tight and delineated. Um, it just sounded it just sounded like I was listening to a full range tower, not a subwoofer satellite system. And a lot of that is owned to the fact that Yamaha correctly integrated the subwoofer with the main channels with the proper distances and then going and doing the EQ just added icing to the cake. It just really made things sound nice. And I recommend you guys basically experiment with this. The bottom line is the latest generation of Yamaha Avantage receivers, the RXA series. Um, Wipeout is useful. If you're a neophyte and you don't really know how to set things up, put that microphone in the right, in, in the main listening position at ear level, have no obstacles blocking it. Do your measurements, run YPOW, then move the microphone two or three foot radius from that main listening position. Do four or five measurements. I think that's sufficient. You can go you know, more if you want to. Let it do its setup. At the very minimum, you're going to get the proper distances. You're going to get the proper channel levels. It's going to get the integration with the sub and the mains. If you don't like the sound of the EQ settings, use the low frequency settings import that into the uh, manual setting and then do your tweaks there. I do recommend you guys really invest into a microphone like a UMM6 um, is the best investment you can make in audio because then you can go and pull measurements and see what's going on like I just showed you. So with that said, I hope you guys liked this video. Let me know if you have good successes down below about using Yamaha's latest YPOW. I mean, I know a lot of people were on the fence about buying the latest generation of Yamaha receivers because they didn't know how the room correction worked. And I'm here to tell you, this is the best iteration of their room correction yet. And it does keep everything 96 kilohertz sampling rate if you have high resolution signals. I mean, they have a lot of processing. So that's kind of a nice bonus as well. I really like this receiver. I like what I'm hearing. The amplifier section in is really solid. Yeah, it's not perfect. I've, I've, I've noted some things in the last couple of videos and I'll link them all up. All the video descriptions will be linked in the cards here. So if you want to look at my past videos, I'll create a playlist as well. And guys, if you like this video, please subscribe, please thumb it up. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audiohawks. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics or if you just want to ask questions. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.